off the coast of Norway, a giant underwater structure makes its way out to sea. Waiting to lower it to the ocean floor is the world's most powerful seagoing crane. At the same time, off the coast of Britain, another monster of the sea is creeping northward at just four kilometers a day. These extraordinary machines may be 900 kilometers apart, but they are very much working together, building the biggest underwater pipeline in the world. Britain is running out of gas at an alarming rate. It is facing its greatest ever energy crisis. The solution lies 1,200 kilometers away, deep beneath the Norwegian Sea, where 300 billion cubic meters of gas have been discovered. Over 5,000 men are locked in a race against time to release the gas, construct a refinery, and send it to the UK along the world's biggest ever underwater pipeline. Named after a Viking ship, the Ormond Langer gas field will supply the UK's energy needs for years to come. The gas will be pumped from the ocean floor to Nihammer on the Norwegian coast before traveling 1,200 kilometers to Easington in England. There is, however, a slight problem. There is no pipe. To lay it will take something very special, the LB200. Inside, 370 men are working round the clock, heading northwards towards the gas field at a speed of four kilometers a day. It's a floating factory, basically. It's a, a large assembly line. It's a repetitive uh, motion time and time again of putting the pipes together, welding them together to make one long assembly from one point, point A to point B. It's gonna pump uh, gas from Nyhammer, Norway to Easington, UK. Nine hundred kilometers away, the most crucial component of the whole operation is starting its slow journey to the gas field. The template is an extraordinary piece of bright yellow engineering that is the key to releasing the gas. This giant tap will control the flow of the gas to the process plant in Norway. It also acts as a guide for the drilling apparatus. The template is really the heart of the subsea production system. That's where uh, the gas comes up. It, uh, it's gathered there and it's sent to shore. And without the template, we won't have any gas to shore. It's really the key element of the whole production system. Getting the template to the site is one thing. Getting it to its final resting place needs a monster. Enter the Dutch heavy lifting barge, the Alf. 71,000 tons of immense ocean-going lifting power that costs a staggering $500,000 a day to hire. It's the biggest uh, barge, crane barge in the world. Size uh, roughly 200 meters long and 95 meters wide. And from deck to keel, it's 52 meters high. And if you take the boom up from the cranes up to the keel, you are uh, more, more or less 200 meters. The biggest block of the crane uh, can lift uh, 7.1 uh, million kilograms, which is uh, 7,100 tons. If you want an easier uh, figure to compare, then it's more or less 7,000 cars each crane. So we have two of those huge cranes, and uh, they can lift uh, together 14,000 cars. You would wonder why you should need two times 7,000 tons of lifting capacity to lift uh, templates of 1150 tons. The reason is that the combination of weight and depth is actually exceeding the standard set upon this vessel. The template installation will be tricky because the target zone is a kilometer beneath the surface in total darkness. It will take several hours to lower it to the seabed. The Thialf then has to maneuver the template into an exact position above the gas field where it will be secured to the ocean floor. 
but at such depths and in often wild conditions above and below the surface, hitting the target is like trying to find a pin at the bottom of a swimming pool.